Thank you for attending this breakout session. This session is filled with powerful information to help improve your health and empower you. Radio Free 102.3 KJLH. We are you. Hey guys, I'm happy to be here. Um, I just want to introduce myself first. Danielle Lawson here uh, of Daniel Art Matters and the Black Dollar Bank. I am going to be hosting a panel discussion with these lovely ladies today for KJLH's Women's Health Expo event. Um, I'm doing it on behalf of Community Build Inc., but um, you guys are all aware of what my topic is today and I'm excited to get into it. So we have Jasmine Durhall here. If you can give us a wave to let people know who you are. <laughs> we have Brianna Cherie and we have Lauren Daniels. Hi. Hello. So I'm happy to have all you ladies here. And I just want to give you guys an opportunity to tell people what it is you do. Quick little blurb, just so they can get a little acquainted with you and your profession. So if we can start with Lauren, since you were last on so the first one, <laughs> we're going to start with you, then Brianna, then Jasmine. Okay, so I am Lauren Daniels. Um, I'm a plant-based chef and just a wellness advocate in general. I've been plant-based for like about six years and that is what um, propelled me like, you know, on this path of the health and wellness journey and teaching people, educating people about ways that they can live less toxic lifestyles. Um, and that is, is a holistic thing. So that is physical health, mental health, emotional health. Um, and I also um, own a company called Generational Health. It is a clothing brand. And my intention with that is to make a statement um, about the, the health of our communities and about um, basically forming healthy habits to pass on to the next generation. So we do it all the time with wealth. So I wanted to do something for health because um, it's impossible to, to really like succeed in life if you are not healthy. So that is just a blurb about me. I am a plant-based chef and um, all-around entrepreneur. Yes. Awesome, awesome. Brianna? <laughs> um, okay, I'm Brianna Cherie. Nice to meet you all. Um, I've started an organization called Women's Room LA where I just put together different community events for women around Los Angeles to network, get to know each other, share resources just to um, better ourselves as women, our community, and learn things and just, you know, help each other. So um, I'm really passionate about like women's empowerment. I'm also an entrepreneur, do a couple other things. I'm in real estate and yeah, just living the entrepreneur life. <laughs> and I'm Heidi yeah. and Jasmine. Oh, hey guys, I'm Jasmine. I'm um, a photographer slash kind of videographer based here in LA. My focus is mostly color with the work that I do. I do commercial work, but I also do just like work for smaller brands that focus on well-being, like physical health and just like mental health as well. So, And, and Jasmine, I don't want to like tip too much into what you do, but tell us a little bit about your connection with chakras and energy. Like that is one of the main reasons I reached out to you for this. <laughs> if you want to just touch it a little bit. I have done in the past a chakra project, which is showcases the visual aspect of how the chakras work in the body. And a lot of my work is kind of like influenced by color in that way and just how it triggers emotion through color and what we see is what we actually, you know, take in on a daily basis. So, yeah. Right, right. <laughs> so I'm pretty sure if you guys have heard all of these ladies speak, you understand why they came to mind for this panel when they asked me to host. Um, they all have unique perspectives and we're gonna dive right into asking them some questions to give you guys a little more insight, whether you resonate more with Brianna, Jasmine or Lauren, I think you can all get a good takeaway from this discussion um, in regards to women's health and our connection between our physical health and our emotional health in a day-to-day -day basis as a female in 2021. So we're going to get started. Uh, my first question, <laughs> and this is a very broad question, I'm going to say um, pretty much just so you guys know how it goes, I'm going to ask a question. And if you are feeling like you have an answer, just go ahead, say, I'm gonna take that one and we'll take it from there. Uh, some of the questions I do have tailored for you guys specifically. 
But for the ones that are open to the floor, feel free to chime in and say whatever you need. And even if you uh, want to make a comment on someone else's question that might have been directed towards them, you're welcome to do so. But I will say, keep in mind, we do have an hour, <laughs> unfortunately. And I want everyone to get their peace, you know, and have their moment to share whatever they need to share. So with that said, we're going to get started. So the first question, which is the obvious question, what is the connection between physical health and emotional health? Now, this is something that I would like you guys each to answer um, with your own perspective of how you feel that it is a connection between physical health and emotional health. Okay. So whoever wants to start. Oh, okay. <laughs> <Go ahead. laughs> um, yeah, so this is something that I love to touch on because um, it's something called the gut brain axis. So it's basically about mm -hmm. how your gastrointestinal tract is um, directly connected to your brain. Um, so, I mean, of course, all of your body is like, you know, interconnected, but this is like a, a certain type of like access that's really, really like really in tune with each other so basically um your digestive tract the health of your digestive tract can directly influence your emotions and mm. a lot of people find that things like um irritable bowel syndrome um constant bloating different things that can be wrong with your digestive tract can have a direct impact on your emotions and lead to stuff like anxiety lead to depression um and the axis actually works both ways so um like you know a like things in your brain, like your emotions can actually affect your gut as well. Like, you know, we see it all the time, like with, oh, I have a gut feeling or I have like, you know, butterflies, like all those things, like your gut. Or this is making me sick. Yeah, exactly. And it's like, it's cool <laughs> yeah. because people like they know without realizing what they know. You, you see what I'm saying? Like they know what mm -hmm. is happening, but people don't realize the depth and like the the complexity of what they're really saying like so your your digestive tract is really sensitive to um emotions and that's my spiel on it for now <laughs> wow well that was the that was the knowledge dropper that was like a book <laughs> term for, for me gut brain access is that right yes <laughs> okay I, I wrote it down for the notes so that way our <laughs> viewers could probably look that up that was a good one okay so who we got next how do you think our physical and emotional health are connected um i will go off and say i really look at them as one and the same i feel like um we're taught to focus more on when you think about health you really just think about your physical but i really feel like emotional health is just you know we don't spend enough time on it we don't take it as seriously so i look at them as one of the same i feel like you're if you have good physical health but not emotional you're really not healthy and vice versa so to me i feel like it's just all one and the same okay yeah i i agree um i think if you neglect one it's kind of like you know detrimental to yourself you know if you're suppressing specific emotions you know you're walking around with that on a daily yeah. You know, even if your body does look good or, you know, you got the abs or whatever, you know, if you still suppressing things or you're not, you know, meeting things that you are bothering you on a day to day or even from childhood. A lot of us have things that happened to us years ago that we still haven't tapped into emotionally. So it is a mind, body, spirit, you know, thing when it comes to just this whole experience, you know, being a spiritual person yeah. in general. I, I definitely agree with everything you ladies said for that. Um, I think a personal takeaway, uh, just to correlate the two is, let's say as a kid, you know, you used to love eating cinnamon buns, right? Random thing. And as you grow up, you know, when things that happen that aren't the greatest, you kind of go back to wanting to have a cinnamon bun just to have that feeling of, well, this made me feel good when I was younger. It gives me a happy memory. But at the same time, it's, not the healthiest choice that you're doing emotionally or physically in that in that perspective so I think everything you guys touched on is hitting the nail on the head this is the direction I want to go in okay we're off to a great start so next question this is also a question for all of you guys how would you rate your own physical health in comparison to your own emotional health Ooh. and why <laughs> <laughs> What's the scale? What's the scale? <laughs> <laughs> so um, we could say it's on a, a one to ten, one to ten scale. Okay. 
um I guess I'll go first since I'm talking <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah you asked on the scale you fell into it so okay physically like I mean we could be better like we could definitely <laughs> have the abs like let's be real people let's be real okay um, so on a scale of hmm I give I've give seven eight ish physically like Okay. I've just gotten back into um, a routine of working out. It's been a lot easier this year. Like last year was just so much going on, but I'm more in a routine and a groove. Um, and then just eat, you say emotional. Yeah. Like, how would you rate your physical and emotional health? Emotional. Wow. I'm at a really, really good place. I'm like, I think that has a lot to do with the work that I do and just like being kind of the director of my life right now and just like choosing what I want to do and not having or feeling obligated, you know, to, mm. you know, be doing something that I don't want to do. Like I had a job. I mean, that's how we know each other, Danielle. Yeah, <laughs> we're coworkers, <laughs> ex coworkers, <laughs> and um, we bonded <laughs> at our at our uh, last uh, employer's office over <laughs> a lot of things that uh, we did not want to continue doing. So <laughs> we both are no longer there. <laughs> but we continue to have our friendship and I really appreciate it <laughs> and just that experience of not like enjoying the work that you do or enjoying like just anything in everyday life can right, be, really right. take a toll on you emotionally and I think um addressing that and being able to you know have the strength to let things go that you don't want in your life and releasing things um that's what comes with the emotional health. And I would rate mine at like, we at like a nine, I mean, eight. Ah, eight, 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 eight. So you said a seven. So you said a seven for physical and a nine seven for, for physical because we don't have the Janet Jackson abs, okay? Okay. <laughs> we're doing good. Like we're in the gym, we're, we're making the mile, but like. Okay, okay. So, <laughs> so you got average of eight. I'm adding it up. You got to average an eight yeah. then. Give me, a, give me an eight. That's a good number. Okay, okay. <laughs> who, you got, who you got next? How would you rate your physical and emotional health? Yes, Lauren. Okay, so you want me to just do one number with both of them together? Well, I mean, we can average it out like we did with okay. Jack. Or, you know, if you feel one's high, one's lower, you know, or if they're the same. Okay. I think that my emotional health and my physical health, I would say they're both at like a nine. Um, my physical health. So like one thing that I try to tell people, like some people get the wrong perception of like the content that I do. And they mm -hmm. think that the goal is like perfection. And I'm always telling people that that is impossible. Like, you know, one right. and two, that can sh like trying to achieve this goal of perfection can stress you out. Like, you know, and just have like, just be so detrimental to your health. So that's why I always say I'm a nine because it's like, I don't, I don't know if I'll ever be a 10, but I'm okay with that. Mm -hmm. um, as far as like my physical health, I've like gone back to like working out consistently. I um, noticed. <laughs> thanks. I was like, I want to get on her workout plan. <laughs> the trainer yeah. looks like he knows exactly or she knows exactly what she's doing yeah like um I like I took this step to kind of um you know invest into my health like you know in areas where I felt where I was lacking and you know I like you know just came off a cleanse not too long ago before that I probably would have said my my health like was that like a seven like because wow. I, I kind of like try to find the balance between like eating intuitively and being like really disciplined. So mm. I do let myself, um, I let myself, you know, eat the things that I'm craving sometimes, like, you know, it's not always the healthiest, but sometimes I go overboard, like, you know, and that's usually due to my emotional health. But right now I feel like I'm at like a really good balance, um, especially with my emotional health as well, because I'm just like, I'm in a really peaceful space. Like I feel mm -hmm. very like sure of myself. I feel like I'm able to, you know, listen to my intuition without any type of like, you know, fear. I feel like, you know, I'm able to set my boundaries with like, you know, the relationships, whether it be familiar re relationships, romantic relationships, work relationships. I feel good. Like I feel like I'm in a good space. That's why I was so happy. Like this panel came at the perfect time because um, I just feel so balanced. I'm I'm glad to hear that. that <laughs> I, I really am. I'm I'm very glad to hear that. <laughs> so Brianna. <laughs> um yeah. So I would say I feel like I'm probably about average that like a seven. I'm like two weeks into the sugar free diet right now. That's just mm -hmm. been crazy on 
like my mental and physical um oh no okay like I'm <laughs> really working towards both I've been going back to the gym but you know I haven't been as consistent as I'd like to I'm just trying to also you know strengthen my like emotional work I've been doing shadow work so I would say seven for both like I'm I'm moving them both up at the same time okay okay so um this question I actually have posed for Lauren and I wanted to know what are some because I, I knew Jasmine for one I knew we were going to end up touching on the workspace so you kind of already answered this question I do want to say that but I I really don't know what Lauren's perspective would be on this and I'm interested so what are some things emotionally that have affected you physically? And if it was negative, how did you turn things around? Ooh, this is a good one. So this <laughs> goes back to like why I like finally started my plant-based uh, journey. So okay. something that affected me emotionally was just like a bad breakup. Like, and it was like, you know, with somebody that was like really my best friend, like, you know, so it was very emotional for me and just the way that everything happened. Um, like I fell into like a, a real like depression, like, you know, so it was just, it was hard. Like that was my first time experiencing um, something like a depression like that, that wasn't death related, you know, but I felt like I was grieving, like, you know, like right. that's how I felt physically. So it was just, it was hard to eat. I was so stressed out, like, you know, I lost weight. And, you know, I was really just lost and I like, you know, turned to being like, you know, plant based because at the time, um, like since we're on the, the topic of emotional and physical health, at the time I was just learning about how you can really um, take on emotions from the things that you eat. You know, and I just mm. felt like I was at such a point where I was like, you know what, I can't eat any more death. Like, you know, like I'm so down, like, you know, right now, like that was kind of like my turning point. I always kind of flip flopped with the idea of um, just being completely plant based. But at that time, I was like, I don't I'm not too sure if this is true, if it's going to work, but I'm willing to try anything that I can because I was just in such a, a like a, a sunken place, you know, so I turned it into a positive because I started to focus on my health and like the discipline of doing the things that I needed to do, um, despite the way that I was feeling so. I think that's how I turned into a positive. It ended up being like a really positive thing because it changed my entire life, like the way that I look at everything. And it was like the more that I was able to focus on, um, focus on my physical health and focus on my emotional health with things like therapy. Like I just went into a whole routine regiment of trying to like, you know, heal myself in every way that I could. You know, I started to use more resources. I started to go to more, you know, wellness centers. At the time I was in college and it was like my first time being able to go to therapy and go to like a black therapist. And yeah, so it, it really ended up changing everything for me. It was like a time where I started to focus on my spirituality more. And it was like, everything was, everything just came together. Like, you know, like the places, like the unity centers I would go to for, you know, my spiritual practices, they were like, you know, telling me the same thing. Like, you know, like eat certain things that could boost your mood. Like, you know, eat like adaptogens, like things like dark chocolate or like, you know, certain type of mushrooms, like do everything that you can to make sure like, you know, your physical health is not the thing that's holding you down from, you know, getting over this like emotional hurdle, mm -hmm. you know? So yeah, I mean, it definitely, definitely turned into a positive. It's, it's something that I would never change because it completely changed the person that I am for the better. Wow. That's beautiful. Um, okay. Uh, any comments to what she just said before we move on? Cause that was a lot. And I just want to give people yeah. a chance to speak on it. If they, if they feel like, you know, Hey, I have something to say too. Well, I definitely agree. Because, no, we're, um, <laughs> Oh, I agree. I um, no, you're also, good. You're good. I'm also plant based too, and I think that that like mentality of just like taking that choice in life has definitely changed um my mood and just like it takes a lot of discipline because I've I was vegetarian for like maybe one to two years. And then I was like off and on pescatarian. And then I was just like, you know, last year, I'm gonna just go plant-based. Like I ain't got nothing but time and choice. Right, right. And oh, it see, that was a segue. <laughs> I ain't got go nothing ahead. but time. I already got the next question. <laughs> go ahead. 
but yeah, I've definitely seen a change in my mood as, as in my mood as well. As, you know, in taking more vegetables, definitely whole foods, and just like food that's alive, like you were saying. Um, I think that that's so important for us to have, like on a daily basis. A lot of us, like I, I remember I had a diet when I would not even eat a lot of vegetables. It would be like maybe once or twice a week, you know. So. Oh man. Yeah. <laughs> back in the day (laughs) you good now so i'm good now we good now i was like no (laughs) i was like mcdonald's i was eating whatever back oh no i probably haven't had mcdonald's in like three four years crazy enough but it's it's changing nothing you're missing nothing I, I know. <laughs> uh, so with that said, though, like I said, that was the perfect segue to this next question. And this is for all of you guys. Um, how has the pandemic affected your health with 2020 being as it is? I know, Lauren, you already pretty much said, you know, it gave you a chance to really adapt a new lifestyle, you know, and kind of the same with you, Jasmine, you said the same. So Brianna, how how has it affected you uh, with the pandemic? I know you said you're on a sugar diet. <laughs> <laughs> was it because of the pandemic or <laughs> yeah it kind of was because I would say okay. I gained um some weight during the pandemic and even outside of gaining weight I just been more sluggish and just feeling unhealthy mm-hmm. and so I actually just saw a video like on YouTube of someone that did like a 30-day sugar-free well sh- a process sugar-free challenge and so mm-hmm. I decided to try it and um for the purpose of losing weight and just you know, getting back healthier because sugar just is, you know, it's not good for you. So um, I would definitely say that's because of the pandemic, um, just trying to have more energy. And it's, it's, mm-hmm. been, it's been going well so far. So, yeah. So you've, let, you've been feeling a lot more energetic since you started this diet? Oh, yeah. I definitely uh, noticed a difference from not having any sugar outside of like fruits, natural sugar. Mm-hmm. Um, I've been having a lot more energy for sure. That's awesome. Um, for you guys, um, with, uh, things like the pandemic and some of the issues that you went through, um, it seems like you guys are already pretty much saying like, I have to eat better to feel better, but what do you do to keep yourself grounded? Let's say if you're, you know, if you are in an emotional funk for some reason, what's something that you kind of know, okay, I know if I do this, it'll uplift my spirits a little bit. So I guess more of a, I don't want to say a quick fix, but something more um, like attainable within a short amount of time. What would you say? Yeah. Um, I have like a routine that I normally do. um, And sometimes I fall off and whenever I fall off and I can feel myself emotionally just not as healthy, I always know like I need to go back to it. So I have kind of like this list of like four affirmations that um, I found really helped me to lift my spirits. And I also have um, this guy on YouTube that I listen to that has a channel, basically kind of like a podcast about reprogramming your subconscious mind that I listen to that. And it kind of always just kind of brings me back up feeling in high spirits and feeling good about myself. And um, and I also read um, You're a Badass by Jim Sincero. Those three things I pretty much do like the first hour when I wake up in the morning, I'm like rotating like 10 minutes of affirmations, read two chapters of my audiobook, and then like finish out the rest of the hour listening to my podcast um, every morning. And that kind of just brings me back emotionally, like in a high vibration. So just hearing pretty much uh, motivational words, or like you said, affirmations, like just speaking those that that's enough to get your spirits back to where you're in a grounded space. Yeah, okay. Okay. That, that definitely gets me back up. Okay. What about yourself, uh, Jasmine? Um, for me, so it's kind of similar. I have affirmations as well, but I pre-record mine on my phone with my mm-hmm. own voice. And then I can, I listen to those and just sit down and just listen to them over and over. Or I'll, if I'm doing something, I'll just like, if I'm getting ready to go somewhere, I'll pop those on and listen to them as I'm doing whatever I'm doing. Um, there's also somebody on YouTube that has like one of the best guided meditations. His name is Muji. He's like, I guess he's like a guru, but 
he M-O-O-G-Y. I'm M- typing this stuff down. Yeah, <laughs> M-O-O-J-I. J-I. Is mm-hmm. something about his voice that is just so calming and relaxing. And if I'm just upset, because I think too, sometimes like when we do get into a funk or upset, I think it's important to feel those emotions and kind of sit with yeah. them so that we can kind of work through them. But um, to like, I guess, ease through it, the guided Muji meditation is definitely my go-to for sure. Yeah, I think it's big to understand why you're feeling what you're feeling Mm -hmm. if you're actually trying to fix it, you know? So I think it was nice that you said, you know, what you just said about that. But what about yourself, Lauren? Um, I kind of do like similar things as them, like affirmations. Um, And like she said, it's important to feel what you're feeling. So I make sure to be like gentle with myself. Like I'm naturally Mm. like kind of like hard on myself. Like, you know, like I really am my own biggest critic, but I really try to make sure to be gentle with myself, but not let it go too far where I'm like enabling myself. So I I decide how long, you know, I'm going to allow myself to be like in a funk. You know, like I give myself like, you know, rest days. Like if I'm just really not feeling it and I have the opportunity to rest and like, you know, clear my mind, I'll do that. Like, you know, and I'm not going to get mad at myself for going off of my routine because, you know, it's important to take care of myself. Um, And the other biggest thing that I do is I make sure to go outside. Like I make sure to go outside in the sun. Like I'm like one of those people like where I can literally just like go to the beach. That's my favorite place. I'll go to the beach or buy some water and make sure to sit in the sun and kind of like let that charge me up in a way. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I think that's important too with this whole pandemic. Like a lot of people have just been like in the house, in the house. And we we hear so much conflicting information about like sun cancer and all that stuff. Like people forget you need to go outside. Like you do need air, you need sunlight, like, you know? Um, yeah, but that's my main thing. I just make sure to go outside. Um, and I try to move too. Like sometimes I won't do like an intense workout, but I'll make sure to get myself moving and it makes me feel productive. And then it'll, it'll kind of like, you know, be like a domino effect from there. You know, I'm happy you said moving because I actually realized that as you were talking, moving is something that I do subconsciously to uplift my spirits. Mm -hmm. I know if I'm laying down or sitting down too long, I'll start to feel very blah. And I guess it's just from a sense of you're not doing anything, get up and do something because I am harder on myself. Mm -hmm. So I I agree with you when I get up and I actually do something, even if it's as simple as washing a dish. (laughs) You know, I I feel a lot better because I'm like, okay, I'm on my feet. I'm doing something for the day. And I think I get that same energy when I step outside, you know, because if you're in the house for too long, you do get this sense of like, I don't want to say looming, like just Mm -hmm. feeling, but you do need sun and air and and you do feel the effects from being indoors and then stepping outside. It's a completely different dynamic Mm -hmm. that I feel your spirit has when you're under some sunlight you know even when it's like raining or like windy it's still something about the wind in the air and I think I don't know if you guys can agree to that but it's something about the air in itself that just kind of breathes life into you like so yeah I I agree with you um Rihanna I have a question for you uh because I know that you do networking events a lot and I want to know what do you think is important in maintaining a healthy relationship with people um, that's a great question. I feel like checking in with people. I notice a lot of times, like, um, you know, you may meet someone and like you have a connection and you kind of, everyone, you know, have a lot of things going on. So you may just be caught up in your own life and may, you know, especially with social media, since we follow people, you kind of feel as though I'm seeing them or I'm talking to them, but you're not really communicating with them. I feel like actually reaching out, like sending a text or picking up the phone even more to really talk, hear someone's voice and just check in with people to see like, you know, how are you, how are things going in your business or your personal life and just, you know, planning lunch days, just really connecting with people um, that you come across or even people that you've already know, friends, but just, um, you know, taking time out to kind of stay tapped in with your network. I feel like it's really important and something that we don't really think about as much often and what would you say um your 
physical has to do with something like that? Um, hmm. Doing those actions as far as just making sure you're staying in touch with people and checking in on them. What would you say your physical has to do with that? Yeah, for me, because that's even something I've been trying to work on myself. I'm like, I need to really just, you know, reach out more to the people that are that I see in my network and just get out more and just, you know, just plan little lunch dates and just get out and like Lauren said, movement and just, you know. So we can say energy probably, right? We can say, you know, if I'm having a slow day, I'm probably not going to want to talk to too many people because my energy level is low, right? So I'm probably going to want to keep that energy bottled up for myself for whatever other little tasks I may have to do for the day. But if I am feeling a little higher in my tank, I might go out and actually do more and, you know, have those conversations with those people. I feel like that's kind of um, a way that we can connect those two. What do you think? Yeah, I'll definitely say that. Yeah. Yeah. Jasmine and Lauren, do you guys have anything to say on that? No. 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 Well, you know no. what? I do got something to say. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. I just to say like I really liked her point about checking in with people like you know and able uh, um being able to maintain your relationships because that's something that I lack in like I can definitely say that um and it is true like social media does give you like this illusion like you know like that you're closer with people than you actually are right um and it, it really does something for you when you don't neglect your your healthy relationships and you make sure to kind of um kind of like, yeah, check on people and make sure to kind of give the energy that you would want out of people. I think it's kind of like, it turns into like this, this cycle of, you know, you being able to kind of receive more like good karma or good energy, because you're able to, you know, get out of your own thoughts, get out of yourself and give that to somebody. Right, right. Um, with each of you guys living a more of an entrepreneur lifestyle, do you ever find yourself neglecting your health? And how does that affect your work in personal life? Um, That's great. <laughs> go ahead. No, go ahead. Yes, I'm sorry. Um, definitely from time to time, just because my kind of work is so, it can be so demanding sometimes. It's like you do the shoot, you know, it's the work after the shoot, it's the deadlines and stuff like that. So I do fall into those times where I am, a little bit neglecting of like, okay, girl, walk away from the computer. Like you're doing way too much. Um, but I think it's it's also, it falls into just that discipline of knowing when you are, you know, doing too much on a computer. Like if I am over editing, okay, let me just get up, t walk away. I will come back. They will be fine. You know, the deadline is now. And then also understanding how you work too. Like, I think I, it takes, learning you know what is the best process for you like um do you edit better in the morning or whatever you might do do you work better in the morning do you work better in the afternoon um do you have time set aside when you do not work at all and then how long are you doing it i think all of that plays a part i, I agree so when you do find yourself um neglecting your physical or emotional health um what are, I'm trying to find the question again. Is it back? Okay, yeah. What are some signs? And this is also a question for all of you guys. I'm trying to like a little bit speed it up. But um, what are some signs that show your physical and emotional health is out of balance when you, like, what is something that you're like, okay, I know that I pushed myself too far left or right and I need to do something to fix this. Like what, what's a, light bulb for you in that moment for me uh it's it's gonna be me making mistakes <laughs> obvious mistakes like you know stuff that is just like okay girl why did you do that <laughs> over editing like that's a good one like if I'm tired I will ooh, the face the skin I will have to just restart the image so I know the clues is just like overdoing work or like under underdoing mm -hmm. it not doing enough <laughs> And would you, so I think that's a good point that you said. So when you overdo something, do you think that that's more of your physical health or your emotional health falling out of balance? Uh, emotional, definitely. Because and I'm when you, rushing. 
or, you know, I'm thinking about time or I'm thinking about something in the future or thinking like, oh, I got to get this to them before they, you know, like right, whatever right. the deadline might be. Right. So it's definitely yeah. emotional. Okay, because I'm assuming, you know, this is with myself too. Like I move a lot slower when I physically don't feel well, you know? Mm -hmm. So a lot of times when we do work that's bad and we're doing it too fast, it is because we're thinking like, we're oh thinking gosh, I have so much to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which isn't healthy emotionally. So yeah, I, yeah, that, that's a good answer. Well, do you guys have anything to say on that, Brown or Gloria? Um, I get like hangry. Like I neglect my like, eating habits if I'm like so like caught up in work like I'll, I'll do that like I'll be so busy where I just don't eat at all um and it just it turns into just a bad situation and I'm a type of person like I'm not naturally like irritated or hangry and sometimes when I get like that if I am caught up in work it takes a minute for me to like realize like why am I so like snappy like what's wrong with me and I'm like oh you didn't eat like you need to sit down and like you know get yourself together like <laughs> Eat a snack, girl. <laughs> yeah, eat a snack. Eat your Snickers. Like. <laughs> so that's like, I can agree to that. Yeah. I'm I like, think a lot of women get angry, though. I really we do. do. Like, you know, and it, it really is a sign, like, or like she said, like, you're, you start to make mistakes because you're kind of rushing. Like, I get like that. Like, I'll get really anxious and just, like, trying to do things too fast. And it's just, mm -hmm. it's a bad situation. So I make sure to go sit down and go eat and have some quiet time. <laughs> <laughs> and Brianna? Yeah, um, I feel like for me, when I do a lot of work, I do a lot of work, like, up in my head, and I'll just be having things going so much so that I'll just notice like oh I've been sitting like in the same spot for hours and it's like physically I'll start feeling like okay I need to get, I need some fresh air I need to get outside I need to move walk around do something so I've been trying to just get more in the practice of like okay maybe go to a coffee shop or well now that things are opening up you know go somewhere outside even if I just go to the park and just like write things down but like getting up and moving because when I'm just stuck in one spot and I'm working all in my head so much and just thinking about all these things I just start feeling like I just I just feel it inside I'm like why do I just feel like almost like sick like just sitting in one place is just unhealthy like I'll sit for hours and I just start feeling like okay I know something's off I need to I need some fresh air like I need to be out yeah yeah and no, I can definitely agree with that no now I have one more question um before I ask my closing statement and this is just because we're all females and um I want to know how can your appearance affect your attitude? <laughs> and now that's like a surface physical question, but I feel like it does something, you know? And I do feel a lot of times if we don't feel the best, we may not do it up, you know? We might just be like, this is what you get and this is it. And throughout the day, you might, you might that might be your attitude for the whole day. This is what you get. <laughs> so stop asking me for stuff, you know? So yeah, I just want to know, like, how do you guys, like, individually, how does your appearance affect your attitudes on a day-to-day -day basis? Anybody can take it away. Yeah, um, I will be the first to admit that when I do not feel, when I do not look good, I do not feel good, and I, you definitely can see it in my attitude. And I try to not let myself, you know, just be looking crazy because I know that it shows on my sleeve. So I'm like, no. <laughs> that's not okay. Like, you can't just be having an attitude and just, your hair not done. Like, it's bad because his shirt did not work out today. <laughs> that's not okay. <laughs> okay, okay. I mean, I'll go second. Um, yeah, if I don't feel cute, like, I'll just be over the whole day. Like, honestly. So, I do. I really do. So, and I, I didn't realize that at first. Like, especially when this whole, like, quarantine started, I was getting up and trying to be productive, but I was in the house. So, I'm like, okay, like, you know, I don't have to get dressed. And I'm like, damn, why am I not motivated to do anything? Like, you know, why am I not focused? Like, what is the problem? So, I had to get in the habit of making sure, like, you know, I get up and, like, you know, actually, like, get dressed, do something with myself. Because, like, you know, that confidence is, like, a really big part part of life it's just a big part of everything like your physical health emotional health so yeah I try to make sure to get myself together because I'm like Brie like if I don't look good I just I don't feel good I feel it Jasmine yeah, I'm gonna agree you know 
I'm gonna get up. I'm gonna I'm gonna beat my face. Like I'm I might overdress. Like, and I don't know if that's me being an artist too. Like that plays a role into it. But I just it it does make an effect. Even colors that you wear. Like you ever wear something like super bright and you like okay yellow. I'm feeling like all the energy today. I'm feeling like the sun. Like I'm feeling good. Like right. I think that plays a big part. So I'm I, over the quarantine. I was definitely waking up still like doing YouTube videos, getting dressed, you know, doing my hair. And even if I wasn't going anywhere for the day, like going to the store or anything, I think that plays a role in your mental, like just making sure that yeah. you feel good physically, whether it's you're wearing makeup or if you're not, if your your hair is in a wrap or not, as long as like you feel cute in that, you know, setting, I think that's important. I think um, for me, I, I had a whole episode uh over this pandemic actually and it was because I found out I was anemic and um I'm good now but I had an anxiety attack and they kept saying well what were you thinking about and in my head I'm like I just felt like I was about to pass out so maybe I just got scared <laughs> that I was about to pass out you know and um when I really look back on that time I realized like okay one no you weren't taking care of yourself physically the best that you could which results in, of course, you being anemic. On top of that, you know, as women, we have our cycles, which affects our health even more. We get drained <laughs> of a lot more things than men do. Um, and I really think once we realize all that and we really take the self-care thing seriously, we can see a dramatic difference in the, our health and the way that we actually get dressed and like get ready to take on the day in a day-to-day -day basis. Um, Jasmine will be the first person to tell you, Lauren, I think you've seen me a few times before the last uh, year or so. I was a hat person. I will put on my hat and I will go anywhere. <laughs> and it's because I felt like I, I just need to run all the time. I always felt like I was on go mode. And after I had my anxiety thing with the anemia, I couldn't wear hats anymore. Like, I literally felt like, no, <laughs> like, I don't want to wear that. <laughs> So, but it forced me to say, okay, Danielle, take the time out to slow down and do your hair today. That's okay. And then even with that, it's like, I felt a difference in, okay, I'm more ready to go out. I don't feel like I'm being pushed out the door necessarily. And that led to me saying, well, I can take time to like put on some jewelry or I can, you know, think a little bit more about the outfit I'm about to put on. I'm just not like, okay, hat, hoodie, I'm taking someone to like ER. Like that's kind of how it felt, you know? Like I just gotta <laughs> ER. get out the door. So I really, you know, seriously though, you know how you just run out the house like <laughs> for an emergency? That's how it felt. And I didn't realize how much my appearance not only affected my attitude, but it was affecting my health and the way that I took care of myself, like the way I actually moved. Because I mean, if you throw on a hat all day, why do you care about your hair? You know what I'm saying? And I mean, your hair is still a part of your body, you know, and, you know, it's still something you need to take care of. So if you just sit in there, letting, even if you have a bun and you just sit in there, letting it sit and mat up or whatever, that's not good, you know? So I really do um, think your appearance affects your health overall too. And that was why I posed the question. I was like, let me just see what they got to say about that. <laughs> but um, okay, I know we're coming on our close. It's three now. Um, <laughs> this is approaching our hour mark. And um, I do want to say I was super happy to have all you guys do this panel today. I, I'm like, okay, I picked the right group of people. Your energy is right, you know. And um, before we close things out, I do want to know what is something you would like anyone tuning in to take away from um, this discussion? And each of you guys, please answer this question. Um, I think overall, just take away um, care for self and like care for self, not in like that superficial social media way, but like right. in that form of like meeting things that are really bothering you um, and addressing them. Um, also just being honest with yourself. I think that's what self-care really is, honestly. It's just being honest with yourself, knowing what's wrong, what's working for you, what's not working for you and moving forward with you know good energy and just yeah taking care of yourself self-love <laughs> right self 
Um, I would say that um, I'm gonna kind of piggyback off of um, Jasmine. Like, don't be afraid to address with what, whatever like you know health issue that you're going through. Um, looks like you said you found out you're anemic and you kind of like you know started freaking out. And people do that with their physical health and they do that with their emotions and they try to put things on the back burner because they're scared of yeah. dealing with them. But I just want people to take away the fact that you are able to heal. Like, you know, like you are able to better yourself. You are able to take care of yourself. You don't have to be scared of dealing with whatever it is that you're dealing with. Um, Cause that usually prolongs the problem. Like, you know, it makes it worse. And just because you try to put it in the back of your mind doesn't make it go away. Um, right. and I think a lot of people, they just don't have the, the kind of like knowledge of self and the confidence to, you know, not speak sickness over themselves, like, you know, not speak death over themselves, not speak, you know, negative things over themselves. And, you know, I just really want people to know that it is possible to get better. Mm -hmm. Yeah, word. Um, for me, I feel like kind of very similar. Um, something that you said, Danielle, though, about feeling like you're pushed out the door that really stuck with me because I feel like that's me um, a lot of the times, if not every day. When I wake up, I just feel like there's so many things on my agenda. I feel like I'm being pushed outside the door to get started. And I feel like one takeaway for everyone and even for myself is that like there's enough time in the day for you to take care of yourself first. Like whatever that means for you, whatever needs to be done for you, for your mental health, your physical, your self-care, like there's enough time for you to get yourself taken care of first before giving your time and energy to everything else. And I'm happy you phrased it that way because um, that's actually something I say often. I always say, if you can't um, take care of yourself first, you're no good to anybody else. And you kind of forget, you know, to take your own advice sometimes when it comes to that. Uh, I guess as a woman too, you kind of get in a super woman in mode you know you're just like I could do it I got this you know especially when you're an entrepreneur because you're already thinking I got a business to run you know that's giving more juice in your tank you know and um I do think it's important that as women especially in 2021 to full circle this that we do take time out to take care of ourselves because they will run you into the ground <laughs> And then they'll look at you and say, get up. <laughs> and man, yeah, you do not want to take that take position. <laughs> exactly. So that's, and that's why you got to take care of yourself. Mm -hmm. What were you going to say, Jasmine? Oh, I was agreeing. Um, nobody is going to take care of you. That's so true. It's like, <laughs> your, it's your responsibility. And we only get one of these bodies, you know. In this right. Lifetime, right. So. You're right, you're right. Well, I want to say thank you, ladies, for joining me for this panel discussion. I really enjoyed our talk. Um, I think each of you brought something unique to the table for our listeners. And um, I do want to shout out Community Build. Thank you for choosing me to host this panel. Um, I also want to shout out that Community Build is offering vaccine rides for people who want to get their vaccines. They're partnering with Lyft for a ride program so you can get there for free. And maybe you'll have some credit left over to go and do some self-care. Um, <laughs> and uh, also thank you to the KJLH. And um, yeah, hope this helped you guys uh, give you some insight on how to balance your physical and emotional health. And be sure to follow some of these ladies and stay up to date with some of the trends and things that they're doing that will actually help women um, move forward with their physical and emotional health as well. The Radio Free 102.3 KJLH 21st Annual Women's Health Expo brought to you virtually by the City of Long Beach and Fresno County Black Infant Health Program.